Model Car fans, welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Ralph, and here I'm featuring my completed uh, MPC 68 Coronet RT here that uh, I built from the brand new MPC kit, and I built this right out of the box. And uh, those of you guys who watched my last video where it appeared much more orange, um, that's my new phone. I got an iPhone 14 Pro. Um, it's got the three lenses on it and a little bit different software and zooming and macro and some of that stuff. So it appeared to edit it much more orange. I put this white paper on it, see what's going on. And uh, playing with the video, there's some settings that I have and I don't have. So there's some issues right there that I'm just learning and playing with here. So hopefully this appears more red. I put a piece of white uh, uh, board down to make it look, uh, hopefully trigger the white balance and not make it more orange, um, keep it red. And it's kind of funny because it appears dark on the actual phone screen when I'm filming where the other video it looked red but once I loaded it up onto my computer I could see it was much more orange um, and that's how it appeared and I have limited availability with uh, the editing software when I render these videos um, as far as that goes and changing the gamma and all that stuff and I'm kind of a rookie there um, so hopefully this is coming out much more red um, it doesn't seem to do it blue, so when I you know, put the blue one here, um, we'll see how that looks here too. So, And for those of you that don't know, this is my um, original build. Uh, it's a resin copy of the original MPC kit. Um, but once built, you can't tell. So even though it's got uh, the AMT chassis from uh, Roadrunner GTX under there and the Hemi engine from the Roadrunner, uh, the 68 Roadrunner. So built this one as a Hemi convertible and the white stripe with the white interior of course and the, the blue body so love this one but I had to build the other one so it's kind of fun to kind of compare the two and the bodies and everything so um, there's quite a bit of differences there and the more I, I studied and looked over all my reference materials and everything the more it uh, was just popping out some of the things that they adjusted and just made right and I uh, really enjoyed this kit, as you know, it's got uh, just the 440 in it, so I left that alone. I didn't add any extra decals or didn't add the upper radiator hose that I would have liked or even the heater hoses. Some of the idiosyncrasies of the original kit were left behind in it, um, and they kept a lot of the original vibe and flavor. Um, and I had a couple of issues here and there. Uh, any of you guys have built this kit or are building this kit, um, you'll run into some of them and you know may experience different things as you're going through it but as I was kind of in a hurry to kind of build this one and just build it for you guys and kind of enjoy it I didn't quite you know re-research or really I just jumped in with both feet just was looking at pictures decided okay of all the colors I decided I wanted to do red I put the black stripe on it and then I was thinking of different color interiors, but then was reading more and more about the option book and what was available. The bright red only came with white or black interior. And then, but if it had the white seats, um, it should have the white stripe. And I'd already put the black stripe on it. And while this uh, car looks great with the red uh, and the black interior, I like that combo. I was half tempted to do a dark red or a tan interior. Um, which would look good in this, but are technically not factory correct for the bright red uh, exterior. So um, I decided, all right, I'll just go with black because that's, you know, most muscle cars have black interior. So that's what I went ahead and did on this one. Um, did the black interior and then just detailed it up with the uh, chrome paint and um, the details there in the console. So uh, came out looking pretty good. And there's a couple of gauges there for the uh, decals for the gauges, um, but not all of them. There's some lacking detail on there and uh, You know finished up the tail panel and That was interesting and quite a bit of work. I put foil all the way across first poked the holes and did the openings for the taillights and Then I went through and then I blacked this section out and wiped it so that the foil would show through the Dodge letters are a Motolo pen, um, really hard to detail those, especially with the uh, extra clear I have on it. And same thing with the lock cylinder, that's a Motolo pen dot. And then uh, just got it all together. And one thing that I did run into putting this chassis in, 
there's pegs back here that solidly holds the chassis so um it appears that they will let you go too far so it really sucked the chassis up which made these exhaust tips hard to put on with the bumper you can see the bumpers pushing them down because they glue right there so there's a glue point right there and the chassis you know probably should be back a little bit so it gives it a little bit of a squat in the back where this one kind of sits up but it's running a different chassis it's a resin resin body but this one the chassis lines up more with the bumper and just seems to fit so much better but um, once it glued i couldn't pull it back apart so that's one thing yeah you know, i would say to watch out for i'll keep that in mind on my next build that that can go all the way because you put it all the way down and it's hard to put the bumper on um, so I had to bend the exhaust tips down. Everything else on the chassis fit really nicely. And part of it, because the back is so far down, it kept pulling the front here. So you can kind of see it's pulled away from the engine compartment here. And you can push it down, but it's just the whole chassis is kind of tweaked a little bit. It still sits square. Fits nice. There's some locating pins um, that glue to. And then the interior glues to the chassis really nicely. And then just getting it all lined up so um everything seemed to fit fairly well other than you know gluing the rear of the chassis a little bit too far down and this was uh bare metal foiled and i put the foil down first and then i put the black in there and then wiped the black you can see this is just clear it's not polished so you can kind of see some of the buggers in the paint um but i was just building it to build it and uh you know I, sometimes i polish sometimes i don't this one i didn't just they really don't stand out in the color um, until you really hit the light just right. So I just kind of left that alone. Because once it's on my shelf, it's on my shelf. But the front grille came out really nice. I like those uh, clear lenses. That's a nice touch. Um, the scat pack thing on the front, the um, license plate, vanity plate. That's really cool. I like that. And uh, I decided not to put a passenger mirror on. It comes in the kit. You can drill a hole. But I decided not to. And then all the moldings and everything so it came out really really nice and detailing these hubcaps really wasn't too bad i just put black paint in there and then i just wiped it away so i got it off the spokes and off the center of the cap and then kind of touched it up now the lug nuts they're the chrome also once i had wiped it away and got the paint where it is there was a couple of spots that i touched back up with the brush but i took my toothpick and picked uh, the black off of the lug nuts to make the lug nuts pop and chrome. So that's kind of how I did that. And, you know, finish, finish this one up. And the wheels and tires are kind of goofy as far as they didn't seem like the tires are just a little too small. And it was really hard to get the um, wheels and tires glued together. Uh, they still seem to kind of fit kind of funny. And then same thing with the plastic pins that go through here. Um, you can get them in there. But I had one that the glue was grabbing before it got all the way in there. So I solidly glued it. So this one doesn't roll, but this one kind of will. Um, and then the rear, I glued solid too because the, the axle, the metal pin that goes through was a little short and would go to one side or the other and a wheel would fall off. So I glued it in the center, but I glued it solid so the wheels don't roll. And for me, the, having the wheels roll is not a big deal. I've had them actually roll off the shelf. Um, and not realize it but you know some of them but it doesn't steer this one steers but uh that's because it's the older tooling um or well, actually the more modern tooling from the later kit so i had a lot of fun with this one and i'm really looking forward to the super b kit when that one comes out and uh we'll see you know hopefully that's a um, by the end of the year or the beginning of next year is what i've kind of heard online but we'll see there's usually always delays but, you know, I have the Mustang on its way to me now and it's supposed to show up tomorrow. So that's the Ravel 71 Boss 351. I got a couple of those coming. So that's the kit I'm excited about, even though, you know, that's just the newest thing. And that's how it is with me and everybody else. You get excited about the newest one. But, you know, I, I don't build them as fast as I can buy them, just like many, many of you. But I've got other ones started, too, as well. So I can call this one finished. And I can move on to the, the next one that I'm going to build or get completed. So I've got some more in the pipeline. If you've been watching the channel, I'll update you on those as well. So this was a, a lot of fun and, and pretty enjoyable build. 
I didn't stress the details on it too much, just kind of, you know, enjoyed building it out of the box and, you know, not trying to make the, the best thing I've ever built out of this one. You know, the paint could be polished and I really should spend some time and, and do that on one of these as well. Um, but didn't do that on this one and I really don't have any polishing pads uh, as, as far as for um, uh, an electric one or my Dremel or whatnot. So eh, I'll, I'll get with that and play with that a little bit. But really enjoyed this one and, you know, I've been asked also on these turn signal lenses or turn signals up on the fender because to me they seem pretty far back and some of the details on this body are just kind of, they're different from the original body. But the more I had looked at reference materials, the more they did appear to be farther back. And then the scoops were smaller compared to the quarter panel. So it really seems like they took their time and did their research on this body from what I can tell looking at reference photos and everything. And, but tried to keep the original feel of the, of the vintage original kit. So it's an interesting balance, an interesting build. Uh, definitely a lot easier to build and fit compared to, you know, the originals and then even kit bashing to make this one right here. So uh, quite a bit of a difference and a challenge, but still uh, enjoyable and pretty easy kit to build. So, you know, it's pretty, pretty highly recommended. You know, if you're a Mopar guy, you got to have this kit. So thank you for tuning in, subscribing and all your comments. I really do appreciate it. And you guys, you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you next Saturday.